I think uh, we should call the meeting to order. Um, our agenda is in the back. People can grab a copy if they'd like. The first order of business is to review and vote on the meeting minutes <coughs> excuse me, for October 9th, 2019. I'd entertain a motion on those. Motion to approve. Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, in your packets, uh, you can review the past vendor and payroll warrants. Do we need to vote on that? You just have to make them available at the meeting for the other board members to Okay. Review. Um, then uh, third item is um, comments from the public on items not listed on the agenda. Okay. All right. Well, the next thing in line is a public hearing, but um, I see there's at least one person in the uh, in the gallery here who has a very non-controversial item that I could take up early, just so that he has the opportunity if he would like to go home to his family. Uh, Bob, uh, would you like us to take up the library uh, trustee? That would be wonderful if you did. Oh, okay. So I'd like to move very briefly to the new business. Uh, da, 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 the Library Board of Trustees, New Business 6C, uh, to discuss and vote to appoint Megan West to the S. White Dickinson Library Board of Trustees. Do I motion. have any discussion or a motion? I heard a motion. I'll second that. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay, great. Thanks, Bob, for coming. And thanks for finding a good trustee for us. Okay. All righty. So with that, uh, we let's go to the... Uh, public hearing uh, to consider uh, a petition submitted by Verizon slash Eversource for the placement of a utility pole, metal platform, regulators and wires on River Road. There are actually three altogether. River Road first, Long Plain Road second, and Haydenville Road will be third. Okay. So uh, let me turn it over to our guest. Good evening. Um, so the first petition on the agenda, like you had mentioned, was River Road. Um, this is a petition for a regulator platform, similarly to what we've been discussing the last few meetings. Um, this is a placement of a new pole and repla uh, replacement of an existing pole for the structure. Um, this one, I think this is the original petition that I think came before the board and then we started relooking at how we go about these. I think this was the first one that the field visit was done on. I think it was Nick Kriegel was in attendance. I think you did a field visit yeah. shortly after with him on this location. I were, um, yeah, I remember being at that. I don't, and I know Brian was there. I'm pretty sure Fred was there. Yes. John may have been there. No, this wasn't the one with, the, there was a guy and a, and a woman there. That's not the same one. That's not the no, same no, one. No, I was not there. Yeah. Okay. You met us not there for sure. Yeah. Right. So, so I do remember being on that particular visit. So yeah, this was the, like you said, the first one. Um, it's installation of the uh, three-phase regulator platform at the location on River Road. Um, Just going up your map here. Yeah. <coughs> so, it's about around 132 River Road. Just looking mm -hmm. at Google Maps. Okay. Um, right by First Brook or First Brook Crosses. So basically, well, I know probably he's in the two hundreds. Are we going south? Yeah. Or south of that? Yeah. Beyond Christian. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Your constraints are, it basically needs to be somewhere between Straits Road and Christian Lane along that stretch of River That's Road in order for it to do its job for, for you, right? Correct. That's, yep. Yeah. So it's probably I remember this one. Yeah. yeah, this was the one that we, this is, this yeah, it was definitely Nick Kriegel that went up because we had talked about the limitations on where it could go. Um, and I know he had met with members and um, the administrator in the field. Right, they originally proposed further north of this. I think it was, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. So and this was said yeah. it would affect property owners. So. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so, 
I'm switching between different pages of maps. Now, is there any, in, any reason why that has to go up between Straits Road and Long Plain Road? Between Straits Road and Christian Lane. I'm Christian Lane, I'm sorry, yes. Uh, yes, because that's, it needs to do a job. Uh, basically, it needs to be regulating the uh, voltage for you know, all the electricity running off, off of that. The, the electricity comes from across the river, somewhere near Straits Road on River Road. Um, and then it's uh, providing north on Long River Road. Um, and if you think of it as energy flow, it, it needs some regulation there because there are both providers of electricity further up and there, uh, or the electricity's got to come from across the river. And regulators are taking care of keeping the voltage constant for uh, subscribers so that you don't get voltage spikes, which can, like at my house, you know, killed one of my solar controllers, which I had to replace the other day. Um, those voltage spikes are bad for customers. So um, the infrastructure is intended to keep the voltage steady within uh, you know, better parameters of 110 volts, which is what we're supposed to have, I believe, or 115. But it, it's basically to regulate the voltage. Um, it can help take up energy and... Uh, no, that's... Uh, so it's gonna, if it's not there, then the people phase, online... Right? Sorry? That is for yeah. three phase. That is for three phase, yeah. Not four? Oh, sorry. How high are the platforms? The platform, the bottom of the platform is around 17 feet. Um, they're 50 foot poles. Um, yeah, it's around it's 17 to 18 feet. You know, they do set them, they set them to a standard depth. Sometimes they go a little deeper, sometimes it's slightly shallow, but 17, 18 feet is the top. Yeah, because that shell was there at you know, on, on the site that day. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to be still using that original pole that's there. We replace it with a taller, um, higher class pole. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that would be, um, so how far would the next pole be north of that? It would be 18 feet. 18 feet. Yeah. And to echo the point that you did a great job explaining oh, well, thank it. You. Um, so I'm not an electrical engineer, but the way we explain how electricity works, we use water analogies or air analogies, which insults it's electrical flow. engineers, but it's about flow, right? So if you have a sprinkler system and you need certain PSI at the end, if you go 300 feet out, you need to boost it at some point, right? Same thing with an air compressor. You're, you need 110 PSI at the end for a framing nail it's not gonna work at 80%, right? The equipment isn't gonna work as well. So the regulators are installed to regulate electricity from both spikes and dips, you know, to work on keeping it constant for customers. Um, and it goes down to not just the efficiency of the lines, but also the efficiency of the equipment in your home, because your appliance requires um, voltage at a certain level, right? lower voltage it doesn't work as well right so we we are required to provide that that consistent voltage within this plus or minus five or six percent or something there's a there's a there's a flux we can use and most of your equipment at home is designed to handle that as well but this helps us deliver that consistent um, voltage to the homes what happens with for instance we have solar generating customers, right? So they're pushing more into the system. Um, we have customers who may be using more in the system. We have customers, very long radial feeds. So feeds that don't loop anywhere, that just go for miles and dead end. The customers near the end, you know, feel the voltage drop and the inconsistency of it going this far. So putting regulators at certain spots allows us to regulate the electricity um, it's actually SCADA controlled, so it actually talks to the substation, talks to our dispatch, and allows them to regulate at the regulators remotely, allows them to regulate at the station remotely as well. So if there's a voltage issue that needs to be corrected at the station in our dispatch center, they can take care of that without having to you know, dispatch a crew and go to the station and those types of things. So these are being put up all across the state. It's a statewide project for us. Um, multiple communities in Western Massachusetts, many communities in Eastern Mass. Uh, it's a statewide initiative. It is. Um, it was presented to the Department of Public Utilities last year. 
I think early last year to mid last year as a proposed project for us. Um, <coughs> there's some regulator influence in why we should do this. Um, you know, keeping up with some of the generators, but also the usage. Um, we do, you know, the customers have a lot of energy efficient appliances and things in their home, but we're still using a lot of electricity as consumers. And, you know, they're trying to be as efficient not only with your light bulb, but also the substation itself, because all that has effect on fossil fuel usage, realistically, so. Um. Let, me, let me just ask, uh, this, on this location, there's another one later on where you're proposing this platform. If you show the abutters exactly what's gonna be there, I've asked twice already for a drawing of what you're gonna put up there. Mm -hmm. You must have drawings, your engineering department must have a drawing showing the height of the platform above the ground, the width, what's actually going to be on the platform. I've asked twice, have you provided the property owners a description of what's going to be there? So I have provided the administrator images of ones that are installed in the well, field. Well, I can see images on the road all the time. Uh, I guess I'd like to see what's there. Yeah. What's, what's being proposed in Waitley, not what's in Deerfield or Conway or wherever the images were. I see them all over the world. Why can't you provide a picture of what's a drawing, a drawing of what's being proposed for I these locations? I thought I got one. I provided a yeah. standard. It was a, it was a picture of somewhere. Well, I provided image, Google images of two street views. Yeah. And then one of our DTR standards showing um, construction with pole regulators. I mean, I don't, I don't have a hand sketch. I'm not drawing a hand sketch. I'll give you the specification or the standard and then the real world image. Well, have these homeowners seen, seen that information as well? I did not know they wanted to see it, but I'm happy to show them. I have This doesn't tell you that. Right this doesn't yeah. describe anything other than a pole mm -hmm. and uh, system upgrades. These are large regulators. These are not yeah. small mm -hmm. yeah. regulators. These are what? Four feet, five feet high. So three on a platform. On a 17 foot pole right. on the ground. We looked on the computer too. And there aren't the, any other things in a platform in our neighborhood. I mean, we see that the three regulators sort of bracketed to a pole. So those are transformers. transformers. Those are service transformers. So are the regulators greater than transformers? Yes, they are. Can you pull that up and show them? Sure. <coughs> I know what a regulator is. Yeah, not not everyone, yeah. and I, I barely I know. know. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, right. I, I think there's a good idea for what kind of the size and scope of what is going in there would look like. And I think that's probably. Yeah. Uh, I mean, my our property, the house is 30 feet from the road. Now, are they going to stick a regulator between the roadway and our property? Well, there'll be nothing there. Which road, which the trees will have to come down. He's south. He's south of us. So in other words, he's south. He's on the other the side, side of the road. road south of the pole. Area. Yeah. In the brook. Yeah. Yeah, they got the property there. The same side as. Yeah, but not in front of the house. Just no. in the yeah. property. Well, well there, there was also. Not, I'm sorry. not the one they're going to use, though. Great. On all those. Uh, so that's a side view. Yeah. And that is a street view. What we have agreed to do was that on these cars, we'll take these stickers on the installation of the pole pole monitor platform. They don't have a patient contact. 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 Yeah, so, so, so the abutters were so okay, good. Because look, they did ask, they did ask for uh, other locations. Why are they if they want more information? Take that step. We try to pick them so they're not in front of a home. Because if we don't know where Do a little pre work. There's houses in the field, right? So that it becomes a little more intrusive, right? It's kind of out there, at least. Here, there's tree. There's a tree line across the street. There's a, there's a bar to the north, it's kind of a shop drawing going to be there. So it should be an issue. Yeah, we get pictures of all over the place, what it looks like. Why can't they provide us? This, this was an issue. Right. That's number, um, that's 170. Yeah, that's, no. Yeah. 
that's what they provide. So you're, yeah, sorry, this, is, is, this is what I was looking for. Is okay, yeah, they provide that. Yeah, it was in the packet. Did you send us email? So it's, yeah, it's going at full it 47. It's just um, all I remember right. seeing is the two that's photos. Good. Well, what's confusing is there's like two nine locations. poles that have white arrows. Which on goes on there. Yeah, that's why we wanted to you know, why there south so of us to mark. north of us. It doesn't so I don't know what the no, white arrows are on the poles. There's the site there, right? South of the barn. Right. This is really Yeah, this isn't I'm not sure. Do you live down here, sir? No, no, no. no. We live, live right over here. Live, the yeah, they live in that house. They live in that house. Yeah. Yes. So it's going to the north of your tree line. That's what I thought. And then, all right. And then um, we live up here. Right. Yeah. The, the White House. Or, yeah. Oh, yeah. The barn. So now. Turn it up. So it's going. On that pole there, you're here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we located so it's it's sort of out of the view that way, out of the view this way. And I don't know which way. We tried to hear. Why did so many poles I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, there were like white marks all the way up and down. So that's. I don't have paper my phone. And you were saying that. Right. So for straight away. Um, yeah. So it handles everything well, you know, down, down, down street down there. Across the, yeah, across yeah. the river. Yeah. I think so it handles everything downstream of that. I think the numbers go up to the same side. So that so that power goes north. Um, for from those high tensions. So this one. So River Road. Across the river, yeah. So the circuit comes. This regulates going up. Regulates going this way. Regulates going there. This way. Regulates now here. Regulates. Well, doesn't regulate that. Yeah. It's kind of a minimal well, distance. It's basically there to take care of all the purple going out. Um, we have other regulators going here. Yeah, yeah. we're yeah. covering yeah. here yeah. all that river road to the north. And then we have single phase. When it drops down to single phase, we have single phase regulators to pick up some of the that. Yeah, that's okay. So yours, for instance, is here. Yours is a bi-directional need. So because you have a circuit blue coming up, both yours works this way, and then if we alternate feed this way, the regulator works on the other layer as well. So they work both ways uh, in terms of the circuit. By the grain, yeah. So that's the and the brook. And the brook. Sure. On Long Plain Road, there's a series of three regulators, but they're on individual poles. Those are smaller. They're not sufficient for this situation. Correct. And then so there's no way to put individual regulators on three separate poles. Because I think the three poles, the, the, the you know, the twin, the, the triplets. If we could, we would. They're too heavy. There's no way. It's, it's just too much weight at the top of the pole uh, for it to be a single And you have to use the size regulator. Yeah. Yeah. Because anything smaller just doesn't, it doesn't serve the distance that it's working. And the ones on Long Plain Road don't have that same distance to travel? So, well now, right? So those regulators that are there now are older. It's, it's meant for existing and you know known future needs and changes, right? So we're, and the one on Long Plain is a little different. I was just explaining to Kathy. That one's not just meant to serve the existing circuit, but it's very close to a tie point to a circuit south of that. So in a need where we have to switch the circuits around, that regulator needs to work both ways. So it needs to feed continuing south into Sunderland? Hatfield. Yeah, Hatfield. Hatfield. Mm -hmm. so I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, but right, so it, it, that one particularly needs to work both ways when, 
when regulating. Um, the one on River Road, it's a pretty straightforward, it's the head when it crosses the river and it serves, and then the one on Christian Lane, piggybacks on that, continues serving down into, then we get into Haydenville, Masterville, Mas Masterson, and those drop down to singles just because of the length of the circuit. If, if we could put them on single poles, we would. We've explored it, it's just not, it's not something that our poles are meant to hold on their own. You know, and it's, but you can't brace the poles to give them added support? That brings in push braces and kind of, well, honestly, no, because it's not, it's not about something pulling on the pole, it's just the sheer, the thing hanging up there, it's just too heavy you know, for this. For those ones, I remember that this is not the right Sir? Yes. Why, why don't they put those, you know, those uh, transformers or regulators. regulators closer to the high tension lines? They already have an area where the high tension lines are there. So it's, they're calculated to be at spots in the system where there's, like, it's flowing, right? And there's resistance. And as soon as you hit a certain resistance point, that's where the regulator needs to be, right? It can go this way a little bit, but it's basically where it's hitting that resistance and you're seeing the drop or the spike in services instances. And then you continue further and it's the same thing. So yeah, and then the close to where it crosses is not far enough on the circuit. It's not far enough on the circuit for it to do what it's meant to do um, and to be able to talk efficiently and effectively with the substation. Um, you know, we're, if, if we had an option, like I said, to single pole mount these, we would. If we had the ability to put these somewhere else, we would, but it just, it won't work effectively. It's not yeah, going to. You, you said it was a prime area, basically because of further down the road, towards Long Plain Road, it's, you got houses there. Well, okay, so, so you, you, yeah, that's, well, we, that's what affects us. So we have a, I don't know, quarter mile to a half mile area, whatever it ends up being, right? The span in which you can put it in. It's, it's probably closer to a quarter mile. The locations we found are wooded or shaded, not directly in line with a home. They're sort of, we're trying to be sensitive towards future growth, right? Which will, when we talk about um, long plane, we just can't move them. And we definitely don't want to cite them like in front of a home because that's, it's not quite. And what if we wanted to develop our, you know, our land in that area, you know, in the future, mm -hmm. you wouldn't move them, right? Probably not. No. 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 Once they're there, they're there. So you're, <laughs> you're worried about other people now, and you get a, you get a, you get a spot that looks pretty good to you. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, you know, and that's why we know find the about it, right? And that's why it's a public hearing, and it's at the board's will, whether there's permission or not. We, we can't control that. Those factors are unknown to us. Like the town, you know, landfill, for instance. We didn't know that was a landfill. So we see it as an open field. Right. Why do we want to put a big structure there in front of an open field, right? We, you know, when we look at it, it's not necessarily That's town road property also. Right, and we've talked, and I've talked with Kathy a little bit about that particular location, and we're trying to find a workaround or an alternate. Could you tell me, uh, other than the, uh, visual negatives are there health or other environmental negatives that so they are oil devices? they are oil filled like any other transformer but our transformers today are not PCB filled right it's a it's a different oil it's still treated as a material if there's a spill we bring in clean harbors to clean it and dispose but it's not um, it's not like the older transformers yeah. It's a windy road. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. mm -hmm. so um, I just kind of, I'm, we're kind of wrapping head around what the, uh, the various uh, objections are where people are. I've got the the town assessor's map on my screen, and it, I think um, if I understand right, um, I've got some folks who are basically the farmer who's on the 
land whose barn is basically the location where this is going to go. Um, the folks who live across the street, yeah, I think, are, are over here. Um, so my question for the folks who live across the street is, from your house, can you see that? Is that barn? You know, yeah. if something were in front of that barn. Is it something that is going to destroy the line of sight? Because from here. If you were looking at your window, kind of to the side, you could probably see the barn. Yes. But it certainly wouldn't be right in front of your house. Right? Um, at least, and if you wanted to look at the map that I've got, that's fine. Um, the folks who live just south of it, on the same side of the street, I think that's... Well, 123 is on the opposite side of the street as 132. Right. Yes. Yeah, 120. Yeah, that's this one. That's this one, which is yeah. the same side, right? Because that's the barn that is going in front of right. 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 Same side. Um, it's completely screened by trees and a brook. Right. So unless the trees are coming down, and and there again, it's looking kind of not straight out in front of the house. It's way off to the side. Only if all those trees came down, right. would you be able to see the front right. of that barn. So right. visually, it doesn't seem like. Yeah. You have right. a no, bunch, I'm, I'm but you're wondering about some of the other other issues. Right? Other issues. Yeah. And and as I look at this now, the development value that you were talking about, where is the concern about bringing down development values? As I look at this map, is it next to the barn? Is that what we're talking about? Stanley. If you decided to put, a, if you wanted to sell that for for a house lot or something. Yeah. Um, and which. And which lot, I, my understanding is that's this one? This one that's in yellow right now on my screen? No, I'm getting the impression it's that one. Yeah, on the west, it's on the west side of the road, can you, right? Can you tell me yeah. which yeah. of these yeah. is? On the west side of the road. I, mean, I know where the barn is, but I want to make sure we're Between the barn and the tree line. Um, right? So that's the barn, and basically the location is the end of that barn. Yeah, right? so we, and they're talking about placing it here. No, are they talking about placing it up here? No. No, no, not right there. They're avoiding the brook. They don't want to put it next to the brook. It was right up next to the barn. It's right up here. That's the I disagree. That's where they have that's where the pole is. That's where the existing pole is right here. I have a stake there now. White stake and yeah. red top. Yeah, there's a stake there, yeah. And that's that's very good. Well, right the to site the is that I went on, it was right next to the barn. No, it's no. closer to the no, it's so very it's close to the road. There's a uh, 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 no, property it, line. There's the yeah. existing pole, and that's the proposed yeah. pole. They right. replaced that with pole. And this yeah. other pole. pole. And that's the brook, and this is the tree line right here. Yeah. It doesn't, runs this yeah. pole it doesn't right here is right, right at the edge of our driveway. Right at the edge of your driveway. Right. The driveway to the, to which, the barn over here. Which no. I don't their see house. any driveways. No, their house is over here. Right, there's another pole right here where your driveway is. Oh, we're not, we're not doing anything with that pole. That's, that's your property line. Mm -hmm. That's here's basically a brook over here. Right. And that, yeah, because this is, this is our fire, this boundary line so here. So the brook's right there. there. Yeah. 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 The barn. Yeah. The barn. The barn. The barn. No. No. On the south side of the barn. Well, yeah, dramatically so. Yeah, so, yeah. so, next to the brook. Yeah. So, so I guess my question would be. I would like some some numbers on that map. They are not known for providing us with great maps. We'll put it that way. That's the, <laughs> yeah. So can know. you tell me yeah. where it is on this other map? So, so it is the pole. The barn should be on here. The pole should be here. Okay. Because the, 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 the map doesn't right. show where this map doesn't show where the poles are. There's a pole here already. Right 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 the mask that provided doesn't right. say how the far these poles are from the property line. Right. So you gave us this well, map. She's right. And yeah. I can't so tell. Right yeah. I would like to see the old bacon there. Put the barn where it's supposed to be. So you have a visual. So your ideal would be for this thing to be put closer to the barn or closer to the barn? So, no, I think it's a few standpoint. Oh, yeah, even brook. Okay, well, even that's where it is. So that's, not gonna, that's not going to impact the property value that dramatically. Yes. Right. Yeah, I mean, well, it, you know, for a lot of being so down, you know, being in the by area. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. going to be yeah. a bit of a So you'd be okay with it there. I mean, 
Yeah. Best case scenario. Yeah. Google yeah. 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 Yeah
could be an issue. Um, What's the timing on this? If we were to approve this tonight. So Verizon would have to set the poles, um, <coughs> and then we would do the work. Our work would take probably three days, four days. It's just, it takes time. Um, you guys are in there in, in and out in a day, right? Typically, yes. Yeah. What's your schedule for doing this? I have no idea what the schedule is. I have no control of the scheduling. I don't know. Okay. You'd have to, you'd have to talk to Verizon Direct about that. And you do this year round, winter time doesn't matter. Thank you. And then, and then they're going to remove the old poles that run into what they're doing and leaving in the east. They the pass um, the replace, I think, yeah. implies. Yes. They're out. Yes. Uh, the old right. ones going. We are, I will say this, and I know we're on camera, but we are better than our eastern counterparts when it comes to double poles and removals. We utilize the system we have in place. It's a joint notification system with Verizon and Comcast Charter. You know, we, we measure those monthly. We try to stay up on top of those because they become a hindrance to residents and towns. If we're ever, if we ever have a double pole out there, then let's say nagging or someone's called about, just let Brian know, he can send us an email. So, I mean, it, all, it is all manual input into a system, so sometimes there are user errors and things, but in general, we try to stay up on those because they're, okay. Right. Okay. Um, so yeah, so does any, anyone uh, need to understand any more to say about the river road? And I'm not sure they care about the I'm long plane road one, so. Okay. Because <laughs> well, we, we, take, we generally take them one at a time. I'll make a motion to approve the river road location as indicated on the map. Second. All in favor? Well, yeah, I did suggest it to, to, to him to suck it up to the brook as close as possible. Yeah. You know, yeah. If six. Eight feet, I'm getting a little bit. Yeah, this gentleman here, there is a, a, a drainage thing that they, they will work around. But yeah. So, yeah. you know, you can't be probably this would be the best, it's but it's pretty yeah. So, point yeah. taken. Yeah, because I mean, it is 18 feet, I mean, it's longer than I thought it was, you know, but. Okay. Sure, right. Okay. Uh, all, all in favor? Thank you. All right. Uh, all right. Thank, thank you very much, you guys. Take care. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Uh, so, next on the list is the um, uh, specific petition submitted by Verizon slash Eversource for the placement of a utility pole um, metal platform. If y'all can move that to the next, uh, to the hallway, that would be really great because we're trying to continue to meet here. Um, uh, metal platform regulators and wires on long plane road. Uh, so, that's the one where we have the really nice color pictures yes. provided in advance. So I take it you are one of the above? Yes, yes. My yes. name is Kathy Robleski. Oh, my mother okay. is Jean Robleski. I don't know how many are native from Whaley. She's Jean Stahelic. Her family's been farming here for about 100 years. Yes. This was our part of our farmland. Uh -huh. So at one point it was farmland. It was not wooded. You're and talking about 7.3 AC here? Yeah, for that particularly on two large areas in Waitley. Um, I'm mentioning that one you may not know, we used to call it the Cabbage Patch. I don't know if you know where that is. So this one is right here on Long Plain Road. So when I got the postcard, I did realize there was a pole going up, but I did not realize it was going on our property. I don't know if I can share, we have spoken Absolutely. beforehand. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I told him my issue now that I understand what is going on here is that it is located on our property. Uh, right now, the, the land is wooded because it's been grown over. As I said before, it used to be farmland. Um, we've kept it in the family. Um, but we don't know if we want to sell it for building lots or um, you know, what we might have plans for, but I do think that locating it directly on our property would impact anybody who wanted to purchase yeah. that land. Yeah. Just, or right in the middle of the property. Right, right. exactly. Right. I mean, it's in the town's layout in front of the property. Right, but it still would be. But it would, yeah, but I, I, I mean, you, you, if you were to have a, and you can very, yeah, to have a house right here, right. I mean, yeah. you'd be looking square onto that. Right. Thing. So I think your point is, is that it's the fact that it's bisecting land as opposed to on the side of, of the land. So right. what I had suggested to Mike was, um, and he did not know that that was the landfill, and I knew it was the landfill. You can't build on that. I can't imagine anybody who would want to. I want to put solar on it, but that's a separate issue. Yeah. Nice. Well, you need a regulator. Well, hold it a second here. <laughs> um, my my um, 
what I'm recommending is, is now that I see the map, and I was just shown the map tonight, of course my best scenario would be to have alternate two. And I know I just want to address, you're talking about the visual from the neighbor across the street. And I did drive through there this weekend to look. And I think even now when I see these three squares, I think that the person across the street actually would probably be for the purple and the red square have more of a view of the uh, regulator than they would with the pink one that's located in the actual recycling, I don't know what you're calling it, landfill, yeah. the landfill. And yeah. so that is my uh, desire, is to see that moved off our pro property. And um, not, the, not the front of the property. Right, is, exactly. Is that, I um, mean, no, that's what I figured, right? Is no. that location, <laughs> a is that a regulator or is that just a pole? Um, yeah. So the red location is a regulator and I think the pink location is a regulator. Okay. Three with three. No, there's singles. I don't think there's a third regulator out there. So I think, I don't, I don't know the full history, but I don't think there's three out there today. I think the, I'll have to check. But it's just single, they're not, they're, they're not triplets, they're single. So you're saying there's three regulators already on Long Plain, but they're on, there's singles on full. Those are singles, much smaller singles. Okay. Um, not necessarily meant to do the same work as the proposed regulators. Um, they, they wouldn't be able to do the same work um, today. That's why I think, I think there's only two. I think one might have come down without a commission and the other two might be inactive at this point. So, and, and this is the case where you'd be putting it, uh, a pole in 18 feet from an existing pole and putting up a platform with the three regulators. Correct. Just, just yeah. one regulator. No, three. Three. Yeah. three. Oh, so, no, it's three. So originally there was three single regulators yeah. here. I think today there's only two because yeah. either maybe there's a pole hit on one or it failed, it was removed. So the other two are just sitting there dormant. So you so what's being proposed is a, it our triplets. Our triplets, and it would be a replacement to the existing triplet, but we're missing one out in the field. So so, but it's, it's exactly like we're look, talking about a river, really an nice one. The 18 foot structure. So is, is that property owner across the street aware of your alternate two location? So we just came up with these yesterday. Okay. Um, through discussion, and I put this together today and sent it off for review. Um, and it's because of the fact that it affects the town property and the resident property. Um, I wanted to kind of go through these alternates and see if one was more favorable than the other. Then we go through the petitioning process um, okay. for an alternate. But, you know, I didn't want to cancel this right. petition. I wanted to have the conversation yeah, first. The surrounded by a bunch of, I'm looking at alternate one, surrounded by a bunch of trees isn't, isn't an issue. In this situation, no, because the tree line is farther back. Um, it is, okay. It does, this is a little miss, Leading, I think, the angle, but the side is back. So alternate one, you would see it. He would see it. I, I, I would say that's Mike Moronsky's yeah. property. He would yeah. probably Mike. see it. He would probably see the purple and the red very distinctly. Yeah. Yeah, they got some trees kind of screening to some extent, but I think you're right that those two would be more visible than the first one. Right. Yeah, the other, other location we looked at and is further north. Call it north at the, the northern edge of your property. There's a pole here, there's a creek or brook that runs through, and you didn't want it close to the creek. So, I, I don't know how that is uh, in relation to this property. So, that um, one is further up, and I think the lines also cross, they, they cross streets at an angle as well. After that pole, if you did put your new pole south of there, I think that that crosses at an angle. It's so these units also needs to be on a tangent line, so a straight line. We can't have the wires leaving the pole at an angle. Um, we uh -huh. have to put them tangent. Just the way the taps go from the regulators to the wires, they like everything straight. Um, For efficiency purposes or what? I think just technically, right, so every time you put an angle on the top of a pole, you create a strain that needs to be guided. You don't generally guide these types of structures because then you're adding more things up in the way of the line and working on it. So keeping them tangent just keeps a safer work environment. Um, 
you know, we don't guide these structures either, right? It's not part of our standard to do that. So every angle we need to guide it just straight. There isn't a lot of room up there for the guy hardware, for the wire and different things. Um, just the wire. It just seems like that location really is a better location. Is that north of, of my of our property? North of your property, yeah. Okay, on the right hand side before the, the pine trees. You know those pine trees that are straight pine trees? Yes. It would yes. be before there. It was across the street from, uh, from a drive, that driveway. That driveway, I think. Oh, I see what you're saying. You I know, know what you're it, saying. there's a farm field and then there's, you know, it's right at, it's, yeah. I, I, I can't, it's not, it's off, just off this map, but right. yeah. it's, a, it's a good location well, from, from Again, what we know today in terms of what people might want to do. Right. And I just wish, infrastructure-wise, it was possible. There's no way to do it that way. Yeah. So it's it's a we call it a medium corner, and I can tell just by looking at the framing hardware. So it's it's too much of a corner for us. You know, if it was something very slight, but it has guying there today in two directions. So if we built the structure, the structure would be built south of that pole. We would still need two guys. I think it's two two guys on that pole. It, it'd just be too much. You know, we couldn't we couldn't make that work with the platform itself and the structure. Um, if we could, we would entertain it, but we just can't with the the corner on that. So let me ask you about right now. One of the regulators is gone, meaning the other two are dormant. So is this really necessary? Well. Yes, I well, mean, I from, from our standpoint, from providing the regulated electricity. But, not, areas, but no, there are no adverse Im impacts to the current situation. Well, there's no, no I would say there's no vocalized impacts right. or concerns, no, right? These are meant to, it's an upgrade to infrastructure. Right, basically. And, again. And, yeah. and you're saying, oh, it's good enough as it is, and that might be true for today, or might not be true for today, depending on how many other people have experienced their Some people may not know that they have voltage drop at their home. You just may not notice. Um, okay. Some people do, some people But humor don't. me, okay? Because I'm, I, I, this isn't my, this isn't my bailiwick. I'm a homeowner. If I have a drop in voltage, and I don't know, honestly, I don't care. I don't think, unless, unless you can give me a good reason why I care. If I don't know, it's, if it's not impacting my life, I don't okay. care. So um, energy efficiency and um, ability for the devices to use to do their job, um, and not everything is works well. Um, well, that that would be for voltage drop. For voltage spike, that can kill a controller, and it has. It has at my house. We when, when we get any kinds of uh, spikes on the line, I lost uh, you know, one of my two solar thermal controllers. So and, that's, that's one thing people it. may not realize sometimes is you do get those spikes. So you have a control that goes in like a heating unit or something with the well pump related. And sometimes that's a voltage spike related to something happening somewhere on the line, right? And this, the installation, these are meant to combat those. So some homeowners just replace the control unit because they figure it was older or broke. But in some situations, it's, it's doing right. a, a line issue. Okay. Um, I, I just I, I wanted to ask. That. Yeah, and I think you know with the with the energy efficiency point as well, we are bound to provide electricity in certain parameters. Yeah. Um, the and government it regulates it, and it's it does impact it, and it's you know it's what we're required to do. It's what we want to do, and the customers may not realize the benefits right away. They may not know the benefits, but it is it is meant to affect the <laughs> microwave in their house, essentially, right? It'll affect all those appliances. Okay. Could, could you come up here and show us, I guess I'm interested in this map, where the existing poles are. You show the alternates, but which way are they from the existing poles? So the existing pole, we have one about here. So you're so going already a pole there. Go we have one here, and then we have one so each of those color tags Correct. has an existing pole. Basically, has one we were working on. So you've already on. got something in front of your property. 
Um, but it's just a poll. Right, it's right. right. Yeah. And, and, and I think homeowners can deal with a poll. Right. I mean, I have a poll in front of my property, but I think something that's an 18 foot platform is totally different. No, I, I, I would think if somebody wanted to put a poll in front of mine, I might fight it to the nail. Where's the, where's the next I would one? say maybe here. It's hard to tell because yeah. the brook isn't shown on this map, but I'm thinking, like, I'm going to guess that's probably a brook line there. Some, I'm trying to think here. I, it's almost like it almost bisects. I would bet it's right by the purple. It's not showing up here. But the brook pole, I think it's further up. I think it's, think further, it's further up. up? I don't think it's, it's not in front of this house, though. It is slightly back. Because I think it, yeah. I don't know if the, yeah, you know, I mean, with the property line, the brook a, probably goes like this, It shows a little right? line for a brook, yeah, and then there's the property down. line. So my guess is it's kind of so, that property line there. Yeah. Who owns this property? I don't know who owns that. Uh, which one? I guess. Hey, 21. Okay, hold it a second. Okay. Is, that, is that Peronsky's too? No, it could be Chilica's. I, I can come out now. Or Fogel. It's Peronsky's. Right. Yeah. 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 I know I know this. Yeah. 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 Are you in Geonosis? Yeah. 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 Yeah
are either the alternatives that you worked out just yesterday, do you, do you think are going to be reasonable? Um, I, I'm fine with in front of the landfill. That seems. And I was going to ask another question. Since it's such a large structure, are you guys planting any like foliage that would just kind of hide it? Or so, no. Um, just because of we have a standard nothing within well nothing within 10 feet of ground mounted equipment okay. um, aerial equipment it's 15 feet to the t sides 15 feet up and then an arch down sometimes when we do enhanced tree trimming it's actually clear to sky above everything um, so we wouldn't we wouldn't plant anything here I mean I think you know with with alternate one or even like we had talked about if we could even maybe move alternate one a little bit south there is there is a tree line there right so i think future development can maintain that that portion of the tree line on your property to block that and it's really not it's not a lot of trees to maintain either right so if it was alternate one or like we had talked about alternative 1b right. you know we're really just talking corner so the 1B would be um, kind of on the town property as well, just so you know, um, but partially on our property. Is that my understanding? So we had, her and I had talked prior to the meter meeting starting about alternate one, alternate two, and then we'd also talked about an alternate B, or alternate 1B, right? So it would be just south of the um of that entrance to the flag lot um, right so that flag lot has like a 30 foot uh -huh. width entrance whatever it ends yeah. up being so we would basically look to put the structure south of that so it would be in front of the landfill property but to the northernmost part of that property uh -huh. south of the flag lot entrance it would require a petition for basically two new poles we'd have to replace those and we depending on distance we'd either keep the existing pole at alternate one or we would remove that I think it may end up having to stay because of the spans um, but you know that would be that's another is it, alternate yeah, is there a reason why one alternate one B would be better than alternate two um, I think the neighbor across the street the Morowski's might have an issue with it the well, they may alternate two they one might be yeah one B they well, that, that was my concern about alternate right. one, which yeah. is almost not but that they've, common. they've also been notified of all of these and haven't responded. They may not care that much. I don't think one being, they haven't been notified about the two alternates. <coughs> right. Yeah. right, correct. But they, yeah, okay. But uh, so. And my thing is alternate two, I don't think is in, if you look at how his house is facing and he looks out his front window and his porch. He's not looking at alternate right. two. It's right, just a question of development rights or the development at, uh, value for for lot thirty one. Right. That would be the only thing for the future. Much like your issue with right. what do I want to do with my land? Right. Um, forgive me for asking this question. I know that you got nervous when I mentioned solar on the landfill, <laughs> but just in case, are either locations sufficient for regulators if solar were to go on the landfill? So I think. Just looking at the size, I don't think your solar development would be as large as some of the other ones. It's, it, would like be, it would be very small, actually. Right. Right. So I don't like think I don't. I think the system itself, with the regulators we're proposing in this area, like the river road, would be later, fine. It's sufficient. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're yeah. I, I this would be a small. I mean, you yeah. can go up, what we have today. Out. These are meant for today, and you know, to, to combat some of the future solar developments that we're seeing as well right because they are although you wouldn't be combating better. solar development not combating yeah. working well, with we're, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> all right well i would to say facilitate, facilitate the generation of electricity through renewable yes resources. Yeah. well i was just going to say because it does seem like they're popping up left and right and they don't seem to be regulated uh, and you know and i i think oh that i don't think that's the case well i think that i've seen some like say in Hadley and other towns they've been on they were on farmland, and I didn't think that when we 
in general, uh, we talked about solar fields, that it was going to go on land that was farmland or within views yeah. of neighborhoods and things yeah. like that. And no, but they, no, they go through a process, though. Just yeah. that I was keying in that you think it's unregulated. Oh, no, no, it is regulated. I know, but so, I think and that's the, And the planning board is looking at, yeah. and we've talked to them about right. what else can we do to, to so that it isn't, it isn't just... Like a wild west. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so clearly, Really, this petition is is the le the least good of the options. Mm -hmm. So it seems like this is one that maybe we should. Uh, I don't know with the, if we withdraw or if we just fail to act. Um, but you've got two other options mm -hmm. to come back with. And it sounds like from this conversation, I, I wouldn't eliminate personally, Joyce. I wouldn't eliminate the the first one yet, just because we we need all of our options, but. I think we need to go to those two abutters again and say, okay, now with these two alternates being discussed, is this something you want to engage in or would you like to leave it to our devices? Is that fair? Are we talking about alternate 1B and alternate 2? 1, 1B and 2, probably. Well, we should continue the, the hearing until another time and invite them to the hearing. And see what happens. Yeah, yeah. so who would be invited at hearing who wasn't already notified? But do they were all notified, but they weren't notified that. that but I understand, I understand. Yeah. But who, I mean, it's, it's the same group of people. It would be, yeah. I don't know. Um, Judas were invited? Yeah. Notified? Okay, yeah, they, they were notified. So that. Um, yeah, we, so we know. We know. We grab a big. To, I don't know. It's different location. 200 foot right. radius of the. Right. Right. It's a different location. Not in the yeah. Direction. So potentially, though, there might be another abutter or two that would be in on the conversation. Um, I, I'm just trying to look for like what is because we're not going to make a decision tonight, obviously, on this. So to make the way forward, do we? Yeah. If we. I mean, if yeah, we really right put it here, right. I think we've got one abutter who's clearly going to be very upset about it, um, and with the other alternates, in all likelihood, being better. If not, they may not be perfect, but they're, you know, like they're better than this one. Then I, I, I don't think we should worry about coming back to the petitioned option. But let's see how fast can we move forward on those others because we need this infrastructure. But I guess my only point is if those two meet with the same concern from those abutters and their justifiable concerns, just like this one is, I, I just don't want to eliminate anything until, because if we keep eliminating, then what do we do? I just want to keep our options open. And I agree. I don't think it's good good location, but let's... Let's, um, let's not. Uh, Brian, can you help us figure out what's the, um, help us find our way out of this paper bag that we have uh, got ourselves into? Well, I mean, at some point we'll need a, we'll need a revised petition, so if, um, but, but Jonathan's if, point, if and when we change, so the petition for one, you could just continue. Okay. Because if we have to petition another location, we can start that process and petition one can just hang out there. You don't necessarily need to act on it. And at some meeting in the future, you can choose to, you know, disapprove the position, dismiss yeah. the petition. I just don't, I don't want to take a step back in case <coughs> okay. something happens, right? I mean, we want to go with okay. an alternate that's agreeable to all residents, um, but I want to just keep all options out there and then Okay. So, so then should I move to continue this until December? Until <laughs> December? Well, the future, future meeting, and I have questions about our future meetings, too, so. Well, we're definitely meeting on the 9th, right? Well. Or unless you can't. Well, the talk is the, the last Wednesday's right. Thanksgiving Eve. Right. No, November 13th. Right, November 13th and the last one, so we, we could theoretically move it to the 20th. Yeah, I mean, just once in November and yeah. change December. Right, to because I'm, the chances of me being here the Wednesday before Thanksgiving are yeah. pretty remote. Okay, yeah. so, so if our next meeting is expected to be November 20th and not November 13th, 
Right. I was going to skip right through that. We're not going to settle this in the next three weeks. You're not going to have a petition for the new things before us. No. So, oh, really? some time. so yeah. So if we meet with the abutters, like I'm not going to, I'm not going to ask Verizon to draft petitions right. for all the alternates. I'd rather Get. come to a consensus, then request the draft, right. and then when it comes before the board, it's an easier. Good. Great. Um, perfect. Right. So yeah. it's, then it seems to me like in December our meetings are more likely to be the fourth and the seventeenth. Then, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> okay. No, 4th and 18th. 4th, sorry, 4th and 18th. 4th and 18th, yeah. So could we punt this to December 4th? Yes. I bet. Or November at all. Nah. Well, you see, then, well, whatever. Yeah, there, it's not going to be ready. It's not going to be by the 20th. So yeah. and it's certainly not going to be by So we, we can punt it to, at least we, we have to, if we're going to punt, we have to do it to a date and time certain. Correct. Um, and... Uh, I, I, I really don't have a problem putting it to 20 of them. We'll probably have to just keep kicking the can a little bit because we won't. We may or may not have the information we need. And it sounds like if you've really got to, you know, if you figure out with the abutters where the best location is going to be and that petition gets moving, then it may be whenever this comes up, we just say take no action and go on about our business. Yeah, so okay. I may, I'm probably going to. I'll work with Brian a little bit, but I'll probably reach out to all of the residents, see if we can have like an infield meeting, just mm -hmm. meet everyone there, stake options, show options, mm -hmm. just so that when December 4th rolls around, everyone has visual aids and they visit it in the field for this location. So that will be the plan. Okay. So we'll continue then, to December 4th and as a public hearing. Okay. So I hear um, a motion to uh, continue the hearing to <coughs> December 4th at uh, 6 p.m. It's just been seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. Thanks for your patience. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you for hearing me out. Okay. No. It's, 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 okay, so you'll call me. Okay, yes. one more on the poll here. Yeah. One more poll hearing to see if we can get this one done. Fortunately, there's no one in the room from Haydenville Road. Oh, Dan, I'm sorry. I see. I didn't see that. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, we're on number four C to consider petition submitted by Verizon EverSource for the placement of a utility pole, a single pole mounted regulator, and wires on Haydenville Road. Um, so this is also one where I was on the site visit. And I recall there being no obvious uh, problems that abutters should have. I don't see any abutters here. Is there I, anyone else who's got there, something there, to say about it? There is a flag lot that goes off of here. I was not at, at this. Where are we looking at here? Um, it's not that far from Masterson Road. It's to, towards the center of town from where Masterson Road means Haydenville Road. Let so me see if I can pull it up. In this picture is the Kirkendall house in this. No, it's way, way over here. It's That's way. Where Westbrook comes in <coughs> over here. Westbrook. Oh, we're way up Haydenville. Yeah, way up Haydenville. Adelia lives up up here. Uh, see, I was down here. Okay, Adelia lives, lives here. Yeah, lives here. Westbrook so comes in over here. here. There's nothing here. Uh, we're houses up. Houses there, there is, up here. There is, there's a house there, and there, there's a uh, flag lot access somewhere here. Is this the DeForest house? No, DeForest is on a corner over it's here. Right over corner. Here. See, I'm, I'm all confused. I'm sorry. Is this Dwight? Dwight, right? Dwight? Dwight? Maybe. Yeah. yeah um, Delia is over here. There's another house here on the corner. And then there's. And this is farm. This is. This is field. Yeah, this right is all here. Field. All field. Uh, yeah. There's a barn. There's an old barn somewhere yeah. in there. But there is, there, there, I made the... Yeah, it was, a, it was a really steep. It was not a place where right. someone was going to put in a driveway. Well, but they have access to it, flag lot there, to, to Haydenville Road. And I guess I asked if that location was in that flag lot property, and I don't know if you looked at it or... No, it's not. Anybody looked at it or identified where the flag lot is, but... It's not. Yeah, and it's hard to tell from this map. It does show uh, an existing structure. It doesn't, it says 177 Haydenville Road parcel. There's where the new pole is. 
Okay, so 177 Haydenville Road. Um, and it's, uh, that's, it's along this part here, right? So right, right here. It's, it's, it's 179. Uh, the, the I understand. It's right there. 179. Sure, come on up. And this is 171. Well, you've got pictures. So that's 170. Oh, the, 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 the pictures. Pole. Existing pole. Yeah. That's the proposed pole. Okay. Another existing pole. This is the so this land would be negatively impacted. That's kind number of. 171 right there. Yep. That's what it looks like in reality. Yeah. yeah. That black line yeah. is exactly yeah. where the pole would go. And it's just a pole. Yeah. Just a it's just a straight in line pole. Do it's any of these come down? Nope. No. Nope. Why do you need it? Uh, what's the single yeah. pole? Single, 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 single regulator, right? Single regulator. Oh, so it's a regulator. Regulator. It is a regulator. These are the ones that were when we had met in the field. We looked at um, like 75 kVA transformers, 100 kVA transformers. Yeah. So they're smaller yeah. than the platform mounted. Other than the the cooling fins on the side sides, they look like a distribution transformer. Yeah. yeah. I think we actually talked to the guy who lived in that house today. And so my, without knowing where this was when we look at it in the field, my concern was it's going to be right there. That's yeah, access so to that flight right. line. Yep. Right. I'm so just thinking, is, is this developable land? It doesn't look like it is. Because right here. It goes, it goes up steep here. Oh, yeah. Okay. But the back of it is in, in this, maybe this way. Yeah. Well, you, could do, you could do a driveway up in here, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's... And I don't seem to have any. Possibly, but. No, okay. so I, I think we should get this. Yeah. It's okay. good you located so, the property. Yeah, so thank you. This is very that's helpful. That's very helpful. Yeah, it's, it's it's like I'm, I'm learning, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's a learning curve. Yes, yeah. that's good. <laughs> All right, so do I have a motion? You yeah, make motion to approve the whole location on Haydenville Road as proposed. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Okay. Sharpen up the pens here. Okay. Uh, so the next item on the agenda is old business, which apparently we have none. Hooray. Uh, for tonight, anyways. Uh, then new business is largely appointments. Um, but there is uh, a few uh, a few things here. Local cultural council funds agreement. Yeah. Um, so go ahead. Why don't you take it from there, Brian? Because I can't talk to sign my name at the same time. This is for our, thank you, have a great night. Portion of our, our Go National Local Cultural Council Funds. Forty eight hundred dollars This requires the signature of the chair. Okay. I think I put the Cultural Council Funds. Where are we getting money? Yeah. Well, it's early. Yeah, local yeah. allocation. Uh, just, yeah, just want to sign there. I'll just fill in the rest for you. Great. Okay, good. Um, we have a memorandum of agreement with the Franklin Regional Council of Governments to participate in the county emergency communication system. So, a few words from Brian, maybe? Yeah, maybe even a, more than a few, but. Um, so, right now, our, our first responders use the Franklin County um, radio system that's operated by uh, FERCOG. And that system is really at the end of its useful life and there's the planning that's been going on to transition over to I think it's called the 800 system that's the system that's used by the state police um, it's going to be very expensive um, the 800 system? to switch up uh, to switch over um, the state's allocated uh, at least 125 million dollars um, which will cover all the costs for the changeover which we yeah, wish um, and they're going to do that in phases. Just in event, so once all the, the once all the towns that are currently on the on the Franklin system have been um, switched over to the 800 system, then they're going to decommission um, the Franklin County system. That'll obviously take a number of years to do. Um, for once, Waitley's actually included in phase one. Oh, so yeah. we're how the hell did that happen? Excuse me. How um, the heck did that happen? So it happened because they're they're looking at build, building from 91 out. So it so happens that 91 cuts through. 91 is our almost friend today. Yeah. Um, 
so we need to we still need to continue to be on the Franklin system until that happens and the agreement to stay on the Frank our prior agreement ends at the end of the calendar year so yeah what's been proposed by uh, the council of governments is another three-year agreement right um, it looked like there was a way to get out uh, with three months notice is that um, so there's there's a couple things that are different they still have this option to withdraw uh -huh. which is the, the what you're yeah. addressing but system decommissioning number five um, I'm sorry um, 4b option to right. withdraw they put in some uh, penalizing language there if we were to withdraw um, prior to the um, well, I mean, yeah, the migration has form. already happened, though. Like, right. migration happens, we say, okay, here's our three months notice. Well, I think all the all the towns that are on the Franklin County system are not going to be migrated at the same time. So, if wait, so what they're trying to avoid is year one tomorrow, Waitley's all migrated over, and we say, forget everybody else, we're not paying. We're not paying a dime for the Franklin County system. <coughs> we're out. We got our stuff. We're out. Yeah. It doesn't allow us to do that. Uh -huh. um, okay. So, I mean, sort of a practical concern is if this drags on and we well, at least migrated over, and so the, whatever's the, happening, the, the yeah. other other towns are not being migrated over. There's there's a point where the town of Lately should say, "Wait a minute, we're already on the other system, and we're not going to." Yeah. We're not going to continue to keep paying and paying and paying for this other system. That's just so, because. But we might potentially be on the hook to pay for about three years. Right. And so I had a talk. Uh, Jim Savini's been the most involved in this. I had a talk to him this afternoon. And he said, even after we, even after the town has migrated in phase one, he said there, there's going to be parts of the town, most likely west, west of, parts of west of Waitley, where they'll still need to use. They'll need to be on both systems. Um, for a period of time, and he was guessing maybe a couple of years. So it's not we're not throwing uh, good money for for no reason. At the end, of three years from now, we'll have to reassess to see where everything's at. But okay. if we want to, bottom line is I if we want to stay on the system, you know, it could drag out for more than three years. But it sounds like when well, the state's involved, it could. I know. It's so okay, if we want to sign the agreement, it's it's signature of the. Well, it says you user agency, but I would think you could be the chairperson okay. if you want to vote. To All right. Um, so I'd entertain a motion. Motion. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Okay. So the good part, I mean, one of the good things is that the state's going to pay for all the all the radio purchases okay. that the town needs. That's going to save us a lot of money. Uh, but, these? Yep. But the town will have to pay um, installation costs. And they get installed you know, like in our emergency vehicles, maybe in the police station, places like that. Yeah. So, Brian, why isn't, um, and that's just a cursory glance, so perhaps I am remiss, but I don't see South County. E oh, yeah, I did see it. Okay, so never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Okay, we got three appointments to see if we can get through by 7:30. Uh, to discuss and vote the appointment of Nancy Mater to the Council on Aging. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, to accept the resignation of John Devine from the Community Preservation Committee at large and to vote to appoint Doug Coldwell to the Community Preservation Committee at large. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, look, <coughs> lastly, to discuss and vote to appoint Chester Sobieski as the town building's custodian. Did we check references? Um, I'll still need to do that because I hadn't heard back who was going to accept. So if your motion's contingent on reference checks. Reference checks. And okay. Corey check. Um, and what check? Corey. Corey check. I mean, I think we, we can request that. I think we should. Yeah. And we won't be in the schools, right? Right. It, it'd be this building and. Uh, but if eventually it comes down to Hurley, yeah. we expand to Hurley. Right, and, um, we, and Hurley is not part of it yet, but they might be at some point. Right, so okay. so we did this after our first mm -hmm. candidate didn't pan out mm -hmm. two months ago. Yeah. Um, we have Ty Scan and Keith and I interviewed a couple of folks. And, okay. Um, You've met with him? Yeah. Yeah, 
And he, he's not yet accepted or indicated um, he would accept. He called me back. He, he called back late yesterday afternoon and said he would accept. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So well, if we I want to make it entertain a motion. Uh, to, and uh, uh, contingent on. That's the part you need to say. Contingent on um, background and reference and background checks. Second. All in favor? Yeah. And he currently works in Waitley now. He works at CM Wood in Waitley. Okay. 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 We'll turn it over to Brian for town administrator updates and items not anticipated within 48 hours. All right. So, manganese filters, manganese filters. Those went online and they created white water in people's houses. And that was caused by excessive, uh, essentially very small air bubbles that were being pumped into the water to help rid the water of the manganese. Um, they put in a control at the uh, pump house that limits the, uh, the amount of air that's being put into the system and they've got it to a, a sweet point, so to speak, that mm -hmm. the water comes out clear and the manganese is not in the system. So okay. um, if people are still having white water, you should give the water department a call. Okay. Um, but it should be, it's like sweetly it sparkling water, should really. Be, it should be, uh, it should be it's a good spot now. Yeah. Um, the work to reside the fire station is going on now. Um, okay. That'll probably be done should be done within two weeks um, but they got a good portion of it done um, Wayne and I met with the um, the folks from the Army Corps FEMA um, our engineer um, the wetland scientists we had to hire um, yesterday down at the Mill River to look, inspect the the bank stabilization project the reason we had to meet was because the 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 permit issued by the Army Corps was still was still open. Um, it was a restoration permit, so in order to satisfy the conditions of the permit, we needed to show that we essentially complied with the condition of the permit, and that was no net loss of wetlands. Um, so we had the wetland scientists go out and do some um, essentially they weren't the deline full delineations, but they were. They're looking at plants, um, soils, and hydrology. Um, they were satisfied enough, I think, to, to be able to close out the permit. Okay. Um, what they had found was that the site was transitioning. It was trending towards a wetland, um, mm -hmm. but it takes time. And, yeah. um, long story, but it, it's not great wetland. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not great wetland habitat based on what had happened to the river when it got straightened out for 91. It, it's yeah. really the river's losing its floodplain there and well characteristics, but it, and at the end of the day, they're, they're they're inclined to close out the permit, which is good. We still have so that's federal. We still have two more years of monitoring for the endangered mussels. That's a uh, calendar year twenty and twenty three. Um, okay, oh, we're done monitoring for the monkey flowers and the turtles. So okay. It, it was a good site visit. Um, center school committee, we have our first meeting and site visit scheduled for November 5th. Everybody who is um, on the committee should have been notified of that. That's on the town yeah. calendar. Is that on the town calendar? Um, I don't know that it's there yet. But okay. It shall be. It shall be. And is it, it's a day, do you have a time that's decided um, on that? I think that was, that's a good question. I think you said six at the school and then six thirty at town hall. Right. We'll go with that. I, it sounds good. Okay. It so it'll be right. dark. At six, I don't at know. At that point, yeah. Yeah. It's daily savings. It's daily savings. It's unfortunate. It's where it goes. Yeah. Yeah. If people want, people are welcome to go walk and walk around the outside if they, yeah. if they want to see. There's yeah. still electricity there. Um, Tuesday. In terms of sidewalk reconstruction along Chestnut Plain Road, uh, Keith, myself, um, Sarah Campbell, the engineer we had, uh, we hired, and Chip Clock met, and we kicked around some ideas about how the sidewalks could um, coexist or or complement the Waitley Inn. Um, and I think we've reached an agreement as to that, that everybody will be happy 
um, if the if the design that we talked about it may actually increase some of the parking that's available in front there um, and it, it it allows the the Whaley Inn to do some work that it would like to do in terms of its handicap ramp and um, so it I think there will be a good outcome she's okay. going to redesign that part of it work up the new design and then at that point we should involve some of the other stakeholders like the historical commission um, library trustees and then we should have some type of public outreach meeting okay. um, to, to solicit comments on that okay um, so that that's and a veterans be helpful and, and the and veterans yeah. group yeah as well um, this Friday I think you you guys would have had some of these emails um, that's the first uh, yeah, it's the first um, Natalie Blay, mm -hmm. Joe Comerford and Fred Pryor are jointly holding a uh, uh, meeting at the Waitley Town Hall on uh, rural waters and sewer challenges. Um, it's from 10 to, uh, 10 to 2. So if you want to attend that, there's a, it was an RSVP link that had gone out. Yeah, yeah. that be at work. Um, so there's been some, um, the South County Senior Center and the Board of Oversight has been um, putting together this regional working group um, to try to start doing some long-range planning for the senior center. Uh -huh. um, it, really, the focus is going to be looking at um, looking at the, the programs and activities that currently exist and that people would want to see there. Um, and we'll, once that's oh, once that committee gets together this, uh, a report, hopefully they'll do questionnaires and they'll send out a questionnaire and they'll do a site visit each other senior centers those types of things once they get that report together i think the board of oversight will be looking to see if um the current facilities and current facility is adequate or not in terms of it, it makes suggestions as to how to move that project forward. the whole purpose is to evaluate yeah. the viability of the yeah. building yeah. yeah you've got to have a good idea of what you really want to be doing in the future exactly. to do that yeah. right um makes sense. so we that group is going yeah we want to do that and then you had a uh, email from the uh, from the planning board. The planning board is trying to set up a uh, could be a joint meeting with the select board and the planning board and open it up to the public about um, really just about solar, solar and Waitley, good or bad, and what changes the planning board could pursue from a zoning aspect, um, but also other ways that. We might be able to deal with or encourage or however we want to talk about it um, so it's either the November 19th or December 3rd I don't know if it's mm -hmm. I, uh, either of those dates um, yeah I, I mean it's still five but it's I don't it doesn't sound like they're calling for a particular early meeting yeah looking at seven, no, um, like seven. November 19th general those are good let me check those particular uh, days or why do I have on my on the calendar the restoration of historic? What is this? That's the ongoing work at the. Uh, That's it. Yeah, so the don't worry about that. Okay. Nope. Or the third. December third. Yeah. Say picked over earlier date. Neither one's fine. With Neither me. one's fine at this point. Yeah, I would say earlier is better. Yeah. As long as both are still open. Okay. The idea would be, well, there's an outline that the planning board had talked about, yeah. but it would be more of a. I think it should be more of an open discussion about yeah. what's went, what's went right, what's went wrong. Uh -huh. This is the Those 19th, you things. say? Uh, 19th. Yeah, I, I mean, 18th. Oh, just 19th. something to think about because we're probably going to be meeting on the 20th instead of the 27th. Yep. Yeah. You know, can we, can we do meeting it on the third. Back to backs. Yeah. Can we do it earlier on the, say on the 20th? Say at five, 530, I don't know. Oh, it's gonna be long. I think it's going to be a longer meeting. I, 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 I'd rather do the third. Honestly. Okay. Because oh, we have a meeting that's still back to back. We don't meet the fourth. fourth. Yeah, it would be the fourth and 18th. So the fourth and 18th. So either one is back Why to back. Why are we meeting on the first Wednesday? Because if you go second and fourth, you don't respond. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. So back to back. So, okay. okay. So yeah. if we could, I think, yeah. Or earlier is better. It gives them more time to be able, if they're going to respond to something zoning wise, the, the, that two weeks would be important yeah, for them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so 19th. 
November 19th is preferred. Is preferred. Okay. But the third is possible. Okay. So for, oh, I guess it's probably on your list of things to do, but settle on our next meeting dates since it sounds like they're not going to be at our typical yep. times. We had talked about uh, for November <coughs> having just one meeting and then two meetings in December. Yep. Um, so you said November 20th. November 20th. Right. Mm -hmm. December 4th. And then December 18th. And one of the things that well, I sent an email out today to the the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, I'd like to get that process started a little bit earlier in terms of trying to get um, information back from department heads, boards, and committees as to what capital items they're, they're foreseeing. Uh -huh. um, one of the things that totally good. One of the things that, that came up in the past and in conversations with the uh, Chestnut Plain Road folks was the um, speed signs, um, uh -huh. you know, the radar speed signs. That, yeah. Um, the one that we have now is it, it's it's inadequate, really. Yeah. The battery doesn't last very long. It, it yeah, knocks out some of our it's officers. Heavy. It's heavy. Yeah. We got somebody out from straight in the back from trying to move it in another um, car. So the so Jim's got some Jim's got some estimates that are around three thousand dollars each. Yeah. Um, he hasn't yeah. been able to find any grants for it, but I mean that's one of the things yeah. that I think would be good if. We, Right. It's sort of on our complete streets, but it's a little lower down. So if we could do something um, earlier in the most, I don't know, I don't want to say highest priority, but uh, yeah. certainly is all parts of town will want them. If we put one in one place, everybody well, I, th I think we would want ones that could be mobile. I, I, I think they could be mobile, and I would love, and I think we should have ones that can, uh, <coughs> that can log data, because I think we could, uh, uh, Patrol more efficiently if we yeah, have habitual speeders on yeah. Monday yeah. at five fifteen. We could yeah. direct our limited the resources strategic placement appropriately. Yeah. So What's the cycle for the Yankee Candle gifts this year? Oh no, it's not police; it's fire this year. Jim was there last year. Is it kind of, I, I don't remember because that would have been a, an option. Yeah. And I would, I would consider solar. I saw one yesterday, I don't know, maybe Dan was aware of some of these around town. Near Frontier, uh, the back road from Frontier parking lot towards Deerfield Elementary School, there was a solar mounted sign, speed limit, the sign can't be bigger than a notebook computer. And it has a speed limit on there and it's got a solar panel. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's permanent. Towns. Permanent mounted or, or you put on a pole that you can move yeah, around. It's permanent mount. I mean that that looks like a, a smiley face if you're yeah. going the right speed. That, that looks like a, a nice installation, nice compact yeah. with solar on there. Those are the ones they're about three grand. Is that what they go for? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're nice. They're not that expensive. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean I, I guess I my my feeling about the portable ones is that because of all the problems, that even a portable one that's lighter in weight so that it's easier to move around is still going to have all the other problems. Yeah. If for the same cost we can build something in, um, then we get, and if people are excited about it and want to get more, that's our next complete streets, we can rejigger those priorities to, to right. make that happen sooner. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. But I, I really want to get a jump on the capital planning. So. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And maybe even the, well, and hopefully even the budget stuff. Will be better. There was also a discussion of a Jake break sign. Just kind of this whole thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's not a lot of consensus among, uh, I think, the department heads about that. So I think it's an ongoing discussion that needs to happen as to. My own opinion. Yeah. Right at the way we end. No Jake breaks from here to Route 5. Right, because then that covers both Christian Lane and Swamp Christian Road. Christian Lane, uh, your Swamp okay. Road, uh, rest or of just the plane. Or even if the, it's the sign would be on Hayden Bill Road, right? So it doesn't help if you've been using your Jake breaks all the way down, then you see the sign at the Waitley End, you've already disturbed no, the you need, center uh, of town. I think you've you got to put it a little further back. 
Right. Uh, no, you, you stop using your Jake break at the way we end. You're going to then all the people who were here complaining will still be here complaining. No, they're on Chestnut Plain. Right, but they're right there where Haydenville Road hits Chestnut Plain. So if you're allowed to use them all the way up to that intersection. You can back up a, a half a mile. That's what I'm saying. Back okay. up a little bit from there because yeah, it's right. just, uh, 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 you know, uh, don't have to get very far before there's no more houses. Don Sluder's house, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the biggest, I, I think the biggest, well, well, the discussion is safety versus. Right. Versus, you know, disturbance and. Yeah, we can make so, the request, right? We can make the yeah. request and that. There's right. one that could look like. And, I would then, add, and it says accept an emergency, so right, that I mean, takes care of the safety. Yeah, yeah. I would just add, add anything, a, yeah. a, a, I, think, I think we wouldn't have to put a town meeting, I'm sure we would, but we should have a fine associated with use of, usage of engine brakes. Otherwise, I mean, you, you could have a bylaw. The, sure. Pod. I know. It's probably a long sure. discussion, but how we how we enforce it is, is tough. Is tough. Yeah. Yep. It is hard to enforce. So that's why it seems like asking is the easy. That's I the think that's the easy first, first step. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, I and, agree with that. And this is, this see is what pretty, happens. This is pretty direct. There's another one I've seen. I didn't get a picture in Northfield on Route 10. Yeah. Where you come into the center of Northfield. Yeah. Okay. I would entertain a motion. Oh, are you, are you finished? I am finished. All yeah. right. Okay. I would entertain a motion. Motion. Second. 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 All in favor? Yep. All right. All right.